Okay, let's begin. Um, welcome to the Intro to Drone Media Outlet. I am Stan Rizai. I am the founder and editor of 8-Bit Digi. Um, 8-Bit Digi is an independent media outlet that's been around since 2015. Started off as a senior project over at Cal State East Bay before it just grew to become a uh, respectable independent media outlet that mostly focuses on conventions and gatherings related video games and anime in the Bay Area. My other my other work just involves um, being a freelance writer for Retroware for about a year before they they shut down. So I'm just curious. Anyone here anyone anyone here has press? Oh no, nice. which outlet? Steampunk Explorer. Steampunk Explorer. I think I may have I think I may be familiar with it. I believe I met one of the staff writers back at Silicon Valley Comic Con. Ah, oh, nice. <laughs> ah. Yeah, so nah. I remember attending a session like this at Silicon Valley Comic Con. Nice. Yeah. Small world. Here are some of my credentials. I get around everywhere. Some media passes. Also, my credentials of some amazing people I've met. Uh, creator of Dragon Fist. As long as I um, for the, um, I've interviewed him for the uh, Dragon's Dogma 2 at Capcom's office in San Francisco. Met uh, Yoko Taro at uh, GDC. And uh, and that one is, of course, from uh, what's it called, uh, Day of the Devs. Great guy, by the way. So, part one, why, why do it? Well, of course, we have many reasons for fun. I mean, it's a fun thing to do. You get invited to all kinds of places, events, meet all sorts of interesting people, industry legends. Of course, there's also practice. Practice or you learn certain skills. I've used being an editor for 8-Bit Digital as an opportunity to learn all sorts of skills, multimedia, working with AI, just to stay ahead of the curve. and. Sometimes it's worked out best, other times I've, I've tried it for, for a while, didn't like it, and just dropped it, but it's always good to have those skill sets. Sometimes another reason is you just want to do cool stuff. I mean, yeah, for me, this, 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 is, this is something I do for fun. But it's something I could do a lot of things like, it's fun, I can tell all kinds of stories, I get to meet all sorts of interesting people, and I go to all sorts of awesome events, such as anime. Of course, there's also, of course, trying to break into the industry. A lot of people try to break into some sort of industry by starting their own media outlet to dedicated to it. Some of them do, others don't. But just to let you know, if you're ever trying to break into an industry through this route and you don't do it, that's okay. If the industry doesn't want to take you, the finance industry is gladly to take you in. <laughs> I learned that the easy way. <laughs> of course, which led to getting a job and and anyone ever done anything just to out of because you made a bet with someone? I'm just throwing that out there because you never know if you you meet someone who did something just as out of a bet. Okay, getting started. So uh, there's two routes you can always take. There's for the there's the fame perspective and industry perspective. Now before we go any further, my specialty is mostly video games and anime. So I'm, that's the perspective I'm going to be talking about. You could, of course, apply this to any kind of other industry or field. It's just, just to let you know, just to, given the fact what I do, this is the perspective I'm going to present. But you can always retool it in whatever way you like. So, finding the audience for the fans. This one's going to be a little easier since you want to mostly understand the fan and you want to look at what they want, what's, what's popular among the consumers. The language and approach can be informal. You can always create your own style, and you'll be mostly focused mostly on trends that you see within your in the fandom, within your community. And then this would be more difficult is going to be from the industry because this requires to have um, an industry understanding. It doesn't mean necessarily mean you have to work in the industry, but if, let's say you're an indie developer for video games. That's an industry perspective because you know what's going on in the industry. And you're going to get a lot of access. From this perspective, you're going to require a lot of behind the scenes access. Go to a lot more industry focused events, trade shows, 
a, of course, you're going to really pick up on a lot of industry jargon because that's, that will have to help set up, establish your legitimacy, get you to understand what's going on in the industry. Of course, you're also going to be looking to emerging tech, emerging technology, emerging trends among people who work in the industry. A, also, you want to know your strength, know what you're good at, understand your limits, have a plan in place, but also be open to self development. Some skills that's very vital to learn, um, business and marketing, because you gotta really learn to, you gotta really know how to promote yourself. Um, also, you gotta treat this more like a business to some extent. And you can't really just be throwing money at it and expecting nothing to happen. You wanna expect some kind of result, and if you're not seeing results, find a way to deliver those results. Maybe focus on your marketing, focus on how you're promoting yourself, maybe focus on what's wrong with how you can improve the work. Multimedia is very important now. I don't really, myself, I don't really do that much video, but I do do a lot of photo editing and Canvas, Canva, Google C have been fantastic for photo editing. Social media is also very important to understand. Try to be proficient in at least two major platforms because not more send me on everything. And so you want to be focused on where your core audience is. For, for myself, I'm more focused on Facebook and uh, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter because that's where all my, most of my um, activity is from, or where I generate the most activity. Meet the law and ethics. This is how you avoid a lawsuit, or how you how you avoid um, destroying your reputation. Reputation is very important, and it also helps to have basic journalism skills. So here's a big question: Who do you want to be? Here's being a journalist. Now, despite all the hate you hear, journalists are still credi credibil have credibility. It's just not the profession itself, but the individual. So there are journalists who, who, are, who are highly respected, and then there are those that are not so highly respected and give the rest of us a bad name. But on, on, a, on, on a smaller scale, people do trust journalists. They're more willing to talk to you. And of course, this does open all sorts of opportunities. The next is commentator. You have some journalistic skills, but it's more giving your opinion, and given how well vested you are in the subject matter, your opinion could actually be, be very, either very credible or not so credible. So it's still, it all mostly comes down to how, how much you know and how, how, much of a, how much your audience can trust you. Then there's influencer, which is just a marketing term for Popular social media figures, and unless you're already well known, most businesses are going to treat treat them like over glorified freeloaders who just want something free. So you can just go ahead and ignore that. Building your own outlet. You definitely want to find a platform that works best for you. For example, if you want to do a website, you know, WordPress or Squarespace is the way to go. I prefer WordPress. Um, some people prefer Squarespace, and if you're not really into writing, you just want to make a video, YouTube is the way to go. So, and, um, you know, I've seen this discussion a lot. I personally find video making very time consuming, and I've, I've met a lot of people who, who make videos find writing to be way too time consuming. So, it mostly comes down to which one, whatever you're good at, or which is, which, which is whatever is your preference. And of course, there's establishing your credibility. There is, number one, that domain name, absolutely secure it. Number two is um, custom email. Now, most people just use like their website, their name at gmail.com. Yeah, I would recommend getting your own personal email. Like for me, it's ed editorial staff at 8bigdigit.com because it's establishing more credibility. And it has saved my butt so many times because I've had fraudsters pretending to be me, reaching out to other PR firms saying, trying to get free games, but they've already caught on knowing that I have I have my own personal domain name. <laughs> and then off, offline, you definitely want to do, do a lot of networking. Either go to networking events or just talk to people at conventions, show them your badge, compliment them on their cosplay, go hang out at the artist alley, get to know the people who work there. 
And of course, in this day of age, you could also do digital networking, find a meetup group, could meet on Zoom, just hop in there, chat, get people to know you, and one day you'll meet them at a real event, or a, I mean an in-person event. And of course, most important of all, budget. Your finances are limited. Plan accordingly. Have a month a budget for events or a monthly budget. Only spend on what's important and be resourceful when it comes to going to going to events or buying buying stuff to review. Here, here's a few examples of good investments: that domain name, custom email, blue check marks on Facebook or Twitter. Those are good investments. Opens more doors. Just fraud. Sometimes when you're starting off, you're of course you have to buy your own games, comics, movies, movie tickets, etc. Before you get the complimentary stuff. Same thing with convention passes, but uh, some but convention passes they are sometimes they are a good investment because you go to the right convention or right ex industry expo, that becomes a golden ticket for you to go, be invited to other ones. In my case. 20, uh, 2016, I go to, um, no, it was 2017. Yeah, 2017, I bought my own pass for uh, GDC. Um, I bought the cheapest pass possible, $300. I attended the event, did the best I could to write a story, story paid off. Next GDC, I'm they invite me to come over and never, never had to buy a pass for another convention again. I will occasionally buy, buy a pass for smaller events because I like to support the small guys, or, or, or plus 10 bucks, I'm not going to complain about 10 bucks. Alright, our three tools of the trade. Some skills to have, um, basic journalism, photography and graphic design, coding, working with AI, and based on understanding of media law and ethics. So, journalism, what is it? Basically, it comes down to research and reporting of events, subject matters, or a person. More, it's more about research and building trust, followed by writing. And there's several style guides you can use. The most common are the AP style, which is what I was trained with. Uh, there's the Chicago Tribune style, which is very similar to AP with minor differences. And then there's the New York Times style, which is a whole different thing. And then, of course, there's the type of journalism, such as data, which is most a lot of sources need based on numbers collected and crunching down the numbers to tell the story. Business, which is of course based on business advocacy when you're trying to promote something or either a cause. Investigate. This is a more well-known one. This is what Woodward and Bernstein did back in the day. Photojournalism. This is mostly trying to tell, tell a story with photos, and of course, it's moves in with interactive journalism. And lots of sports, sports journalists, people take take the lessons of sports journalism and really apply it to e sports, which is some which I, which is pretty interesting. Photography and graphic design, some be it with a be it with a camera or in or with an in game via photo mode. You gotta understand the best methods and techniques when it comes to taking a photo. And given how much like camera technology has evolved, you no longer need a big phone. I mean, it's, I mean, I this is what all I use for my, my all my photography. It's iPhone 13. I've had it for a while, for a couple of years now. I am so happy for it because I really can't no longer be, carry those big SLR cameras with me everywhere. And of course, with uh, smartphones, you got. Get all sorts of apps such as Canva that can help, or Google Seed that allows you to edit your photos and put in the watermarks and size them correctly. So, which is perfect for when you want to post them online or in your articles. Coding. So, the good thing is that a lot of websites now, um, you don't really need to know how that much, need that much understanding of coding. And a lot of it has a low code method, meaning that a lot of it is just plug and play while very little coding is required. You could, of course, do some coding for coding maybe basic HTML and CSS, but overall it's not really required. But having that skill is very is so it will be helpful. And if you ever want to learn how to code, free code campus is perfect to learn. 
just to get some basic coding skills. Working with AI, now this is a new subject given the advancements made with chat GPT. So I think it's very important to note that now AI is not it's not a bad thing. It it's a tool. A tool that you need to you can use to improve your work, maybe help you improve, become a better writer or better editor. How it understand and you might it always helps to understand how it works. So what I usually do with Chat GPT for my eight digital articles, I I kind of have most I have a a set of guidelines set up. Make, make the article, clean up the grammar, make it make sense, make make it sound presentable, uh, SEO friendly, all that kind of stuff. And type in put in put in a sentence or a paragraph. Chat GPT does the work, and if I like, I don't exactly I don't even copy and paste what Chat GPT says face value. I take what I like and include it into the art into my paragraph. Or just stick, or make minor tweaks. It should be as important to note that Chat GPT should not be doing your work for you. Don't just use Chat GPT to um, or AI in general to do everything for you. Because if you're not going to bother to write or make a video properly, no one's going to really bother to watch it. And of course, there's a lot of news outlets that have been using Chat GPT to replace writers, but many of these have been already going downhill to begin with, so they're just digging their grades even faster. Ah, media law and ethics. Media law. Copyright. Uh, don't play try uh, or take other people's photos without permission. You could get sued or DMCA takedown. Media, another media law. Don't slander, don't slander people. You could get sued. <laughs> Now, media ethics. Now, this is, these are the principles and responsibilities when it comes to the influence of the media of your work. So, basically, the best way I have to put this is: just because something is not illegal, doesn't mean it's also right. So, be, you do always be doing the right thing. Don't, don't, don't abuse your power. Don't abuse your influence. Always, always try to do the right thing, or try to do right by your readers. All right, part four: building the brand. Your brand. This is how you go from a having a small blog with five feet readers to getting getting the passes to major conventions. I know I look silly wearing a mask, but remember, I'm at I'm at the Gundam VIP party at Anime Expo. I needed that mask. Mask is like to protect myself from the con stink. <laughs> So this helps. First of all, helps that to understand where you where you're at right now. Right now, when you're starting off, you're a small fish in a huge pond. You're have, you're gonna have a lot of competition. So, which means you also gotta go with understanding where you're at and have an open mind. Don't be a snob just because you've never heard of someone. Open yourself up to other people. Who, people listen to their stories. Listen to what they have. What they want to share. You never know, you might find a niche through there. Networking, again, this, this is requires a, you taking a lot of action to gain yourself noticed. No one's going to notice you. You've got to like, get people's attention. Hey, I'm right here. I'm growing. <laughs> got to meet, meet people, networking events, conventions, or cold calls to PR firms. I know that to PR firms, usually through email, but you don't go to an industry expo or a convention like Anime Expo. You can find a PR person, exchange business cards, get on their mailing list, helps all the time, works all the time, or most of the time. You also want to develop relationships with other outlets. That way, and that way if you maybe need, need a freelancer or someone to help you out, they could always come to your help if you need be. This is especially true for game journalists. There's this Facebook group where uh, we all meet, or usually we all, if we, we all like ask, hey, I, or anyone knows who to contact to get review, the, these review codes, someone's always going to have the answer. Uh, unless unless it's, a, it's a game being published by Sony, then not going to happen. <laughs> they are very strict on who they want to work with. But sir, as I did, uh, this is, I, I really need to be doing this. 
But um, basically, you want to make it official, get those tax breaks, and don't do it in California. You're going to have to pay that $800 franchise fee for I'm guessing it might be a little higher now. Ah, reputation. This is pretty important. One, don't fight don't drugs. Don't that could really hurt your reputation. Uh, remember what happened to that, um, what's that guy with, from IGN? Uh, don't write fake news. Also could hurt your reputation and can also get sued. Don't be a creep at con. Um, anyone, if you're active on the uh, on the uh, fan made Facebook group, you know the minute someone's been acting very creepy, everyone's gonna know about it. You're not, you're, and you're practically gonna be persona non grata here. The same goes with all the, a lot of the other local cons in California. Everybody talks to each other. So if you do something, something that violates people's trust, everyone's, everyone's gonna know about it. Uh, don't do bad reviews for attention. <clears throat> I've seen some of the people write give reviews to game games that are probably are eight at work give a two out of ten to a game that might that at worst is an eight out of ten just for the attention and yeah they get the clips but they also hurt their reputation because everyone just thinks oh you're not a real critic you just want attention so also don't burn or backstab your sources because them, them, once you do that, they're, they're never going to help you out again. Oh, I know. If you go to networking events, don't go buck wild at the open bar. You will look dumb and burn a lot of bridges. Behave on social media. Now, a lot of industry people are, are active on social media, especially on LinkedIn, Twitter, and Blue Sky. Many of them will pay attention to what you're saying. So if you're saying something offensive, or you're just being rude or disrespectful, that could hurt your reputation. But don't pick fights on social media with people. Not a good look. Uh, don't pick fights at all. And also be cautious of who you're following or communicating. Some, some people, of course, have a negative reputation, and you don't really want to be associated with them. Now, sometimes if you do say something stupid by accident, and people call you out on it, just apologize, delete, delete what you posted, apologize, and move on. Don't, 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 don't try to be defensive, you're gonna lose. <laughs> oh yeah, and plagiarism, gotta bring this up again, so you can work with, okay, if you, you don't have to go through, through some fancy process, and maybe you write something, it's automatically copyrighted. There are a lot of people who will plagiarize your work, Post it on their own website just to get some cheap traffic for Google ad revenue. Best thing you could do is um, Google has this legal troubleshoot or legal service where someone plagiarizes your work, you uh, report them to Google, Google takes it off their search engine. It's not as it doesn't exactly get taken down, but being taken off Google is practically the kiss of death for a website. Also, again, don't plagiarize other people's work. Okay, building relationships. Here are some easier ways to do building relationships. Cold emails, networking, going to con special events, attending meetups and meetups. So this is the best, the best way you can always start a lot of relationships is by cold emailing their PR rep. So just uh, send up a set, you send an email, introduce yourself, you introduce your website, your brand, which, what you do, and from there, you can get the ball rolling. Now, you might have to do it a few times since simply because there are times where your email might get flagged as spam. So you, so you want to, of course, email them. I'd say if you don't hear back from them in a week, try again. And if that doesn't work, try again. And then after that, you know, your best bet is to meet them in person. Most of these like, emails, their emails can be found on company websites, and, but there's also some directories available, or industry-based directories that will give you the email of the person you're looking for. But to get on this, of course, you need to establish your, your, your brand to some degree. Networking. From here in the Bay Area, there's a lot of networking events for indie game developers, game developers. I, you know, I've attended over the years that have always proved very, very rewarding because you can meet developers or who will have a pretty cool indie game or developers who will later get picked up by, by major companies and it helps you get a foot in the door to their PR people. 
Fort takes on business cards with you. Uh, Beth wants you to like, share information. You can usually find these on Meetup. Uh, Meetup's a good place to find them. There's, of course, LinkedIn, Facebook. Uh, Facebook events. But you, of course, should also find them at conventions such as here at FAMA or, well, not, in, not industry so much here at FAMA, but definitely at GDC and Anime Expo. Of course, conventions next door are a great place to network. Now, from, from a fan perspective, cosplayers are good people to network with, artists are good people to network with, vendors are good people to network with, and of course, they can tell you all sorts of interesting stories to connect you to the right people or people you're looking for. Major events such as Anime Expo will, of course, bring in a lot of industry, industry folks, so you can always just walk the floor there, go to an to a industry booth, speak to their PR rep, get exchange cards, get on their mailing list. Of course, you want to look out for like, any, like meetups that happen around the, the conventions, these are great places to meet other people, and mixed in, mixed in meet, meetups. You might not always be going to a conventions, but you're of course, there are smaller meetup opportunities happening here in the Bay Area, especially in San Jose or San Francisco. My advice when it comes to industry-based mixers, avoid the free ones, simply because you're, you will not produce great results. Because if it's free, you're going to get a lot of people. Most of them are just there to check it out. I've never had any good results on free events, so. But you might have, some of you might have good results, so don't don't discourage don't be discouraged to check them out. Final thoughts. And my best advice is to do it alone. Or I've had, I've done this you know, on my first venture. I've done two in the past with partner, and always ends because the partner does not share my passion. Be realistic. No, no, get your starting with limited resources. But it's also important to set goals for yourself to know where you want to be. Learn who your audience is and use that to grow. Learn from other professionals. Budget, but also try not to do everything for free. All right, that's my presentation.